how is it that um, we find ourselves here doing a song by Neil Young? In the early mid-80s, um, Greenpeace were wanting to increase their profile here, also raise funds for um, you know, the anti-nuclear protest movement, and they invited out three big overseas artists um, to New Zealand to raise funds. Um, so that was Neil Young, uh, Graham Nash, and also um, Bonnie Raitt. Um, so we, that connection was through my wife at the time. Her sister worked in the music industry. They knew that I'd worked with a lot of overseas artists and were quite used to working with them you know, on a personal level and asked if we would do artist management for them. So if we would just look after them for a couple of hours prior to their performances, you know, be on stage, ask me to be on stage with them, do stage work, work with the security and all the sound people, and then afterwards as well. So of course I said, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, Bonnie Raitt couldn't make it. However, we had Neil Young and we had Graham Nash. And really great people. I um, really enjoyed working with Neil Young. Um, he, is, um, I found him to be, he had one or two of his children there. I think he had both his children. Um, and they were lovely. Um, his wife at the time, Peggy, she was nearby, but I didn't really get to meet her. I think, um, anyhow, so just, just prior to uh, Neil going on, we spent about an, an hour and a half together. And funnily enough, for him, prior to go on stage, he did this huge physical workout for about 30 minutes, and it was really full on. He did it with his son. And that's, at the time, how he sort of prepared himself physically, but also, you know, emotionally. And, you know, he's an intense guy. He, um, he has a lot going on in his head. He, he's able to converse about lots and lots of different subjects. We touched on his model railways, you know, he loves that. And he, he talked briefly about, at the time, about, you know, this whole digital music was starting to come in and he thought that MP3s were a very poor quality sound. He then went on with his own money to develop a, um, a sound format that is being used to this day. It's, it's what we call lossless compression. Anyhow... So that was great working with him. Um, really neat guy. We got him on stage, um, the head of the security on stage I'd worked with before many times in concerts. Anyhow, we got him on. He started, um, he st he started doing his thing. Part of the way through the set, um, he sat down at the piano, sort of with his backside onto the audience, audience like that, and he was doing, I can't remember what it was, might have been Heart of Gold or something, Down by the River, one of his really famous songs. And the place was crowded. And out of nowhere came this, you know, half can of beer, you know, a little small can of beer. And it sort of struck, slightly struck him on his shoulder, didn't injure him, and just sort of knocked against the piano. And he was devastated, obviously. I mean, it came out the back of the crowd, neither me nor the security saw it coming and unfortunately sort of cut short his performance. But, you know, um, that <laughs> that was how I met him, and, and I had really had the privilege of working with him. Um, yeah, Greenpeace, that, that, was, um, that was great. And, and it was packed out, and of course, you know, Greenpeace then took a far more active role, as did the government at the time, during the time, and, you know, we, we are still now in a nuclear-free Pacific, because of the efforts of some great politicians, um, but also because of Greenpeace and the support of these great artists.